As for the cure to magic, after it has befallen a person, then there is much that can be done. Wallahu musta'an. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure our brothers and sisters who have been afflicted. First thing is don't go towards amulets. No matter how desperate you are, don't start tying things on your arm. Believing that they are going to protect you. Don't fall into bid'ah by tying verses of the Qur'an, because that's bid'ah, we don't say that is shirk. To tie verses of the Qur'an around your neck because you are seeking protection with the words of Allah, we don't say that that is shirk. But to do it in the manner that you are doing, it is bid'ah. As for other than that, from the other types of amulet that I called upon a jinn, and the jinn gave me some information, and then that, that sahir, or that soothsayer, or so-called raqi, that he writes it down, he adds some numbers, draws geometric lines and triangles and so on, then all of that enters into shirk and kufr. So keep away from all of that. If the source of the magic has been found, whether it is wrapped in something or dipped in something, or you find it in the corner of your house or hanging somewhere, take it and destroy it. Shred it tear it apart, seek refuge with Allah, and burn it, as the ulama they say, burn it, and get rid of the ashes. From the best words with which to seek refuge from the effects of magic and jinn, is to recite Suratul Ikhlas, Al-Falaq, and Al-Nas. And al Suratul Nas, after each of the prayers, those three surahs, after each of the prayers, if you don't pray, Allahu Musta'an. Where's your fortress of protection? If you don't even pray, when the Prophet Sallallahu said that the difference between us, or the covenant between us and them, is the salah. Whomsoever abandons it has committed kufr. After prayer, each prayer, recite them. And this is a sunnah anyway. Also before sleeping, Blow into your cupped hands. Then recite these three surahs, Ikhlas, Al-Falaq, and An-Nas. And pass the hands over as much of the body as can be reached. And this should be repeated three times, the Hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that Allah will protect you from everything by way of that. And likewise, it occurs in the hadith in the Sunan of an Nasai, and it is Sahih. The Prophet Sallallahu said the best words with which one can seek refuge with are the Mu'awwidatayn. Are the, are the, is the recitation of Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. Also, one should pray the obligatory prayers on time and sit and remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with dhikr afterwards by the recital of Ayatul Kursi, the, the 255th Ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. And the Prophet Sallallahu said that whomsoever recites Ayatul Kursi in the night, they will remain with him a protector for, that is sent by Allah. And the devil will not be able to come close to him up until morning. That's if you recite Ayatul Kursi at night. Hadith in Bukhari. The fourth affair, is that you recite the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Go to the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah and recite them. The Prophet Sallallahu said in a hadith collected by Bukhari and Muslim, whomsoever recites the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah in the night, then they will suffice him. I mean, they are sufficient for him from Allah. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz said that, the, that this means that they will be sufficient. It will be sufficient to save them from every evil. That's the meaning of the hadith. The fifth affair is that one should seek refuge in the perfect words of Allah from the evil of his creation throughout the night and day. And when one enters into his dwelling, or any dwelling for that matter, أَعُوذُ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ تَامَّاتِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خلق. I seek refuge with the perfect words of Allah from the evil of what he has created. And likewise, that a person, that he should make dua to Allah to heal him 
from every illness and like from those illnesses is magic allahumma rabban nas adhib al baas ashfi anta shafi la shifa illa shifauka shifaan la yughadiru saqama o oh allah the lord of mankind remove the trouble and heal for you are the healer and there is no healing except for yours a healing that leaves behind no ailment and the prophet sallallahu will recite that three times the hadith in bukhari and muslim and there's much else that can be done there's something specific that sheikh abdul aziz bin bazi mentions that some of the salaf they used to do he stated that this remedy it has proven to be to have worked and it is a form of ruqya shari'a that one should take seven green leaves of sidr of the lot tree and grind them down with a rock or two rocks or something similar to grind them down then place this in a bowl and pour over it some water sufficient enough so there's enough to take a bath with and to drink from then once you have poured the water over it then recite over it the following verses from the quran ayatul kursi from surah al-baqarah surah al-kafirun surah al-ikhlas surah al-falaq surah al-nas the verses related to magic in surah al-a'raf from 117 to 119 the verses in surah yunus 79 to 82 the verses from surah taha 65 to 69 then after one has done this he should take three sips from the vessel and then make ghusl from the remainder sheikh abdul aziz bin baz rahimahullah ta'ala the mujaddid and the imam he said inshallah the affliction will subside the affliction will go away by the permission of allah and if there is a need to repeat the procedure twice or more than that then that is fine up until the affliction is removed so you do all of these affairs and whatever else is reported from the ruqya sharia recite the quran surah al-fatiha is a cure any part of the quran is a cure because the quran itself is a cure recite it we mentioned earlier that you should be attached to the tawheed of allah alone reliant upon allah don't start now paying 200 pounds to that one and 300 pounds to that one and he visits you an important point that i heard today that when sheikh rabir he was asked the question about those rakis that go and they say give us 200 dollars or 300 dollars or 500 dollars and we'll do ruqya on you say why are you charging they said because of the hadith the hadith mentions that the sahaba they charged they took a flock of sheep in the hadith in bukhari and elsewhere sheikh rabi said yes after they cured not before they cured so you pay him 200 pound he comes and does ruqya you're not cured and you give him 200 pound anyway then you found him your ruqya didn't work he said no problem i'll come back in two weeks but this time i'll charge 300 because i'll do a stronger ruqya i'll be more serious Hajib, the hadith where the sahaba radiallahu anhum came upon the mushrikeen and they sought with them that can we stay with you will you host us the mushrikeen the tribe of the mushrikeen said no we're not going to host you so whilst they were in that state and the sahaba were leaving the the chief of the tribe of the mushrikeen that he was stung by a corp by a scorpion so then they called the sahaba they said is there one amongst you who knows remedies so he said yes i know a remedy i know a remedy and for this remedy you will have to give me a flock of sheep so he said okay so he went and he recited surah al-fatiha and he used his saliva upon the, 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 the sting of the scorpion so the chief he was cured then they gave them the sheep so one of the sahaba he said we should we are not going to accept it and we should not accept it 
up until we ask Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. So they went to the Messenger of Allah, they explained the story, and the Messenger of Allah smiled. He said, yes, take it and give me a share. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Today you find these people setting up businesses. Setting up businesses, they're like in yellow pages. Raqi on call, call out charge, like a plumber. But the plumber is better. Why? Because the plumber says, I'm going to come out. One, when I fix your boiler, then I'm going to charge you, right? He comes, he breaks your boiler, you're going to, he's going to charge you? So the point here being that the best ruqya that you can perform is the ruqya that you perform upon yourselves. Look at this protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A fortress that will protect you. And know for a surety that we have no fear of the sahir, of the sahra. We don't fear them. We fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have this hidden fear of them, this secret fear that we conceal in our hearts. We fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, you should fear the lion more than you fear the sahir because the lion can do you some damage. Because there's something that Allah has created inherent in the lion. If he opens his jaws and you're nearby, you're in problems. You're protected by Allah with dhikr and ibadah and tawheed and ta'a. Allah protects you. We don't fear the sahir. We fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the sahir going to do in front of the Quran and the words of Allah? And the dhikr of Allah. You seek refuge with Allah and you're afraid of the sahir? How is that possible? He is the Lord of the universe and the Lord of all existence, of all that He created. When He gives you refuge, then what is the sahir going to do and the fortune teller going to do and the soothsayer? Let them blow. Allah will protect us. Let them blow on their nuts. Allah will protect us. Because nothing will occur except by the will of Allah. Don't be fearful. Don't let them scare you. Don't let the jinn scare you. Don't let the devil scare you. Fear Allah. Have iman in Allah and trust in Allah. And if you are afflicted by the irada of Allah, kawniya, by the universal will of Allah that you are afflicted, then again you return to Allah with the ruqya shari'iyah and the ibadah and ta'at and, and a'malu saliha and righteous deeds and dhikr and so on. This is our tawheed. What do you think? The Salafi just learns this academically? Allah know three categories of tawheed. Where's the amal upon that? This is what it means. This is why we learn tawheed. That we worship Allah, rely upon Allah, fear Allah, love Allah, hope in Allah, desire Allah, do acts of obedience to Allah. And not fear the sahir who calls upon his devils. These people, barakallahu feekum, these magicians or whoever else, and these, you know, these jinn that come to you and whisper to you, don't fear them, fear Allah. Allah will protect you. Allah will protect you. The Prophet Sallallahu said that whomsoever takes seven dates of ajwa when he wakes, I mean that that's what he eats when he, when he awakes, then it will be a protection for him from poison and from illness or from evil. The whole of the day from diseases, it will protect you. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Bazi mentions that there occurs a narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is the point of Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, that once it is that a person shouldn't imagine that I have to now go hunting around for ajwa. Because in a narration, it mentions that whichever, every tamar, every date that grows between the two lava plains of Medina, every date that grows between, mean the two sides of Medina, from one side to the other side. Whichever date grows between the two sides of Medina, whomsoever takes seven of them will be a protection. 
Zamzam water is a protection. For it is, for whatever it is drunk. It is a cure. It is a cure. So you should seek out these remedies from the kitab and from the sunnah. Honey, hijama. Like the Prophet ﷺ said, your cure is in three. And one of them was the hijama, the cups of the one who does the hijama, the Prophet ﷺ said. And in the gulp of the honey. You should never feel disheartened. This is not the way of the believer. Be positive. Allah is with you, inshallah. Remain trusting in Allah, and Allah will protect you. Barakallahu feekum.